Hello everybody, today we're starting chapter 8, so 8.1 notes, area of triangles and circles. And so chapter 8 is all about area, so we're starting with triangles and circles today. So our objectives are students will be able to find the area of a triangle and students will be able to find the area of a circle. So let's go ahead and start with our triangle here. The height of a triangle. So the height of a triangle forms a right angle, oops, right angle with one side of the triangle. The height may not be an actual side of the triangle. So if you take a look over here, we can see that it gives us the height, but it's on the outside of my triangle. And that's okay, as long as we can figure out, okay, what is the height from where the base starts to the highest point, that will give us the height there. All right, and then the base of a triangle is a side of the triangle that is perpendicular to the height. So once again here, we can see the perpendicular Let's give us a note on that. Perpendicular means it forms a right angle so we can see here that the height even when it's on the outside over here right it, we create that 90 degree angle and it comes off from the base. Now this is not the base. That's why we have those dotted lines there. The dotted lines are there just to show us that, okay, if we extend the base just a little bit to find the height, and then that will give us what we need. But this is the entire base here, and then this is the entire base on this triangle as well. All right. So area of a triangle, we have A equals 1 half times the base times the height. So A, of course, stands for area. B stands for base, and H stands for height. You also might see this equation as A equals B times H all over 2. So they do mean the same thing, it's just written a little bit different, whether the one half's in the front or just underneath altogether. But if you see it written this way, this is the same thing as the one half base times height. All right, so let's go ahead and try a couple examples. So we want to find the area of each triangle. What we need to know in order to find the area is the base and the height. So the base, we have 18, and the height, we have 6. So we can plug that into our equation. 1 half times the base times the height. And we can go ahead and plug that into the calculator. So we can do 18 times 6 we get 108 and then divide by 2 or multiply by 1 half we will get 54 so when we do these problems you can plug it all straight into the calculator as you see it uh, if you want to do it in your head you can do it in your head um, but let's make sure that we get that there all right so let's go ahead and try number two we need to know what the base and the height is to find the area. My base is 6 and my height is 7. So I'm going to have one, ta one half times the base times the height. Multiply all of that stuff together, we'll end up with 21. All right, let's take a look at number 3. So now here, see how we have like this extended base um, that does not count as our base. We don't have to try and figure out what that value is. My base is just going to be this 14 here. And then my height of the triangle is 10. So now I have 1 half times the base times the height. Plug that all into a calculator. We're going to end up with 70. All right, I would like you guys to try four, five, and six. Go ahead and pause the video. Then when you unpause it, the solution should be back. All right, here's four, five, and six. Go ahead and check those answers. Double check your base and your height. All right, let's go ahead and go to the next page. So sometimes it is more difficult to identify the height or base. You might have to use the Pythagorean theorem, a triple, or a special right triangle to find a side that you need. 
So let's go ahead, and it says uh, if needed, simplify to radical answers. So therefore, we want to try to avoid um, those decimals when we are dealing with the radical answers. So for this problem, we are given every side that we see here, but remember all we need is the base and the height. So I'm just going to take the 15 and the 9. So this problem, it just gave us a little extra information that we need, so we just needed to decipher what information are we actually using. So I can do 1 half times the base times the height. And so if we were to leave this as a fraction, I'm going to get 135 divided by 2, but as a decimal we'll get 67.5. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number eight. So number eight, we have a, we only have one side and we have to know the base and the height. So if we have 60 here, that is a special right triangle. So remember, this is what we did last unit. We have the 30, 60, 90. So the ratios are, we have one, one root three and two. So all I really need to know is the base and the height. So I don't need to figure out what the hypotenuse is. I mean you can if you really want to, but you don't need to figure out what the hypotenuse is. Alright, so we have 12 with the ratio of 1, so from 1 to 12 I multiply by 12, so therefore the 1 root 3, I also multiply that by 12, so my height of the triangle is 12 root 3. So I can say my base is 12 and my height is 12 root 3. So 1 half times the base times the height. Alright, so remember I do want to leave it in radical form. So if I do 1 half times 12, I have 6 times 12 root 3 and then multiply 6 and 12. I will get 72 root 3, and so I want to leave it just like that. So for this one, we couldn't just straight plug it into the calculator because of the root 3, but you can do it in sections like that, or even just take the 1 half, 12, and 12, and then leave the root 3 out as, as it is there. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. So number 9, we have 5 and 13. Remember what I need is the base and the height. So I have the hypotenuse and the base, so I just need to figure out what the height is there. If we remember our Pythagorean triples, we know that there's a triangle that is 5, 12, 13. And so I just want to double check that 13 is the hypotenuse because 13 is the largest number. And yes, 13 is the hypotenuse. So my other leg is going to be 12. Now, if you forgot, let's say you forgot this Pythagorean triple and you're like, oh, I have no idea what this Pythagorean triple may be, remember we can always use the Pythagorean theorem. <clears throat> so I would have had 5 squared plus, let's use x squared, is equal to 13 squared. And then we would be able to solve that problem to find the other um, lake. So let's go ahead and go through that real quick. So I have 25 plus x squared equals 169. And then we'll go ahead and subtract 25 from both sides. And I get x squared equals 144. Take the square root of both sides to get x equals 12. So once again, no matter which way you decide to go for it, we could end up with that um, third side that we need. So the base of my triangle is 5 and the height is 12. So I have 1 half times the base times the height. I can plug that all into a calculator and I'm going to end up with 30. So 30 is the area for number 9. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 10. So this one is another special right triangle. We have 45, 90, so this third angle is going to be 45 degrees as well. Let's recall those ratios. We have 1, 1, 1, root 2. So remember, we do, once again, only need the height and the base. So this y over here, we don't really need to solve for it. And when you see that, you might be like, oh, I need to solve for the y. But we need to remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the area, so I don't really need to know what y is, even though I can definitely solve for it. 
So from 1 to 18, I multiply by 18. So I want to do the same thing up here. So my height will also be 18. So I'm going to have 1 half times the base times the height. Plug that all into a calculator. I'm going to get 162. So 162 is my area for number 10. All right. I want you guys to go ahead and try 11, 12, and 13 using what we know about special right triangles, Pythagorean triples, or the Pythagorean theorem if you need to use that as well. And remember the information that you need, so you only need the base and the height. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and try this out. All right, here's 11, 12, and 13. Remember that it was simplify radical answer. So for number 12, make sure we still have that root 3 and that we don't have a decimal there. All right, and then number 14, a triangle has an area of 40 inches squared. If the height of a triangle is 10, then what is the length of the base of the triangle? So it gives us two pieces of information. It gives us the area, and then it also gives us the height of the triangle. So I can take this information to plug it into my equation and solve for the base. So remember, it is the area, area, is equal to one half the base times the height. So it gives us the area as 40 inches squared. Then we have one half and it gives us the height. So one half base and then we have the height as 10. So I can go ahead and combine the one half and the 10 together because those are both numbers and so we can um, multiply those together and I'm going to end up with 40 equals 5b. Then we can go ahead and divide by 5 from there to get b equals 8. So we'll go ahead and find 8. So the base is going to be 8 inches long. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about some circles. So radius of a circle. The radius of a circle connects the center of the circle and a point on the circle. So the radius here, we have center of the circle to a point on the actual circle. Then the diameter of a circle is a segment passing through the center of the center, oh, that's supposed to say center of the circle, with endpoints on the circle. So that just means both of our endpoints are on the circle there. So let's go ahead and we take a look at the diameter, it passes through the center, and then both of my endpoints land directly on this, on the circle. So now something we have to remember is that the radius is half of the diameter. So if we are given the radius and we want to find the diameter, we just want to do two times the radius. That will give us whatever our diameter there is there. And then, of course, if we want to find the radius and we're given the diameter, we can just divide the diameter by 2. So the radius, multiply that by 2 to get the diameter. Divide the diameter by 2 to get to the radius. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at some of this. Oh, yes, and then, of course, the area of a circle, that equation. So we have a equals pi r squared. So this symbol here, if that is just pi um, and for the most part, we're going to leave it in terms of pi, but if you see down here, if we take a look at some of these examples, it tells us what terms to leave it in, so in terms of pi there, and then as a decimal here. So we just have to see um, what the problem is asking us to do if we're going to leave pi sort of like a variable. So we can use pi as a variable, we just have to remember pi has that specific value of that super long decimal, right? So pi we have pi r squared, or sorry, pi r squared, and then the r stands for radius. So we are using the radius here, so we have to keep that in mind. If we're given the diameter, we have to find the radius and not use the diameter. So 15, we want to go ahead and find the area, um, and we want to leave it in terms of pi. So remember, 
We have to figure out what the radius is, which is 9. Pi already has a set value, so we don't need to figure out what pi is. All right, so the radius is 9, so I can say pi times 9 squared. And since it wants it in terms of pi, I'm going to leave pi just as it is, and I'm just going to find 9 squared, which is 81. So the area for this circle is 81 pi. All right, and then for 16, it does say rounded to one decimal. So once again, I have to know what my radius is. So the radius is 3.5, and I'll put pi times 3.5 squared. So since it does us want us to round to one decimal, we can go ahead and take this and solve it um, and plug in pi as well. So 3.5 squared is 12.25 pi. And then we're going to take 12.25 and multiply that with pi. And so there should be a little pi button on your calculator. All you have to do is press that button. You don't have to try and type in, you know, 3.14 and so on. Um, you can just type the button pi. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'm going to end up with 38.5. So on your calculator, I'll just go to a couple decimals. I have I have 48451001. So we only are wanting to round to one decimal, which would be here. And the reason why I didn't use the four is because I need to take a look at the number after it and figure out if I need to round up or not. So I did, so I have 38.5. All right, and then 17, we want to leave it in terms of pi again. So I just need to figure out the radius. So this is the whole diameter. So remember, the radius is equal to the diameter divided by 2. So if we have 12 divided by 2, my radius here is going to be, oops, I already divided by 2 in my head, 24 divided by 2. So our radius would be 12. So I'm going to have pi times 12 squared to get 144 pi. So if we're leaving it in terms of pi, we just leave the pi right next to it. We don't have to worry about trying to solve it or anything. All right, so go ahead and try 18 and 19. 18 is rounded to one decimal, 19 in terms of pi. So go ahead, give those a shot, uh, pause the video, and then when you come back, the solution should be there. All right, and here's 18 and 19. So go ahead and check those out. 18 was in a decimal, and 19, we left it in terms of pi. All right, and then 20. So a circle has an area of 36 pi. So it gives us the area, just like we had that one triangle problem where it starts with the area. And our goal is to find the length of the radius. Also, what is the length of the diameter? So remember, our equation is a equals pi r squared. So we really only have this one variable of radius. So I can just plug in 36 pi for my area to find that radius here. So the first thing I want to do is divide by pi. So once again, I'm just going to kind of leave it in terms of pi, because if we see here, that automatically cancels out. And then I have a pi in the numerator and in the denominator. So those cancel out just like it did on the right. Um, so don't let those pi's confuse you thinking, oh, well, I have to, you know, use 3.14. or have to plug that into a calculator. The pi's are just going to cancel. Same thing if I had like 6 divided by 6, they cancel to 1, right? Or if I have x divided by x, they cancel to 1. So the same thing happens with the pi. So that gives me 36 equals r squared. And then we just need to take the square root of both sides to find r, and r equals 6. So the radius equals 6. And then we also want to find the diameter. So remember, the diameter is 2 times the radius. So my diameter is 2 times 6 to give me 12. All right, and that is the end of 8.1. So if you have any questions, please be sure to talk to your teacher um, and have a wonderful rest of your day.